So compartmentation, um, that is simply confining that smoke to a single area, a single space, by means of a physical barrier. I mean, we're talking construction here, so that this is your almost your means of egress. Um, I don't know if you guys have had that class yet or not, but that is your fire barriers or your smoke barriers, technically, hand in hand, fire smoke barriers. Um, that is your act of closing a door. I mean, um, they say the biggest uh, lifesaver you can do in a house is to sleep with your doors closed. Um, that creates that compartmentation and it slows or stops the spread of smoke from one to the other. Um, it also, if it is a fire in that room, compartmentation reduces airflow to that fire, which reduced air to the fire reduces your combustion, which decreases your smoke production and the spread of that fire. So kind of go hand in hand there. Um, the second act is the dilution. So this is almost in that little bit of temptability. It's you're introducing air into the compartment or that area and attempt to decrease that overall ratio of smoke to air. So if you start pumping a lot of fresh air into that, your high products of combustion, maybe you have a high level of carbon monoxide, you suddenly dumped a lot more air into it, your oxygen levels are going to go up. Um, you may help, this might go hand in hand uh, with airflow, which we'll talk about next, to um, move smoke out. Um, this, and I say in the bottom, this is not so it's not recommended. This is the hardest to prove calculation-wise. I don't think I actually have any examples in here on dilution. I can't, I, I don't ever use it, can't find it. Um, it's unpredictable how it acts. It also depends on the fuels in the space. And it has the danger of increasing the burning rate of the fire. And unlike airflow, which we talk about neck, which may be moving air, this one is just putting a atmosphere of fresh air into the room. So you're actually introducing fresh oxygen and nowadays that can lead to flashover a lot quicker. So it's a component, it's not, it's not used that much. Um, it may have an effect if you're using an atrium smoke control system, there may be an effect of dilution, but that's a separate, we'll talk about that going forward. Um, so pressurization relies on air pressure differences across such a barrier to prevent smoke movement through those small openings. Um, so I talked about that little Hilti example, you, the, the, when I was in a class and they poked you know a pencil hole in the wall can fill up smoke one way of stopping that smoke coming through is to fill it with um, fire stopping um, the other way of course is to provide a higher pressure in the opposite room or in the room that you don't want smoke to spread than the room with the smoke obviously it's air will keep coming in yes it will cause a little bit of dilution but it'll also keep that smoke in that compartment um, and I said SFE handbook page 1768 that's the fifth edition um, has a diagram of pressurization um, airflow, oh sorry, pressurization, uh, that's used in conjunction with that smoke rated wall, so maybe that compartmentation, a compartmentation and pressurization is a very effective smoke barrier. Okay, that's a, almost a totality of a physical barrier to prevent smoke movement. Airflow is very similar to dilution, um, but it's a predefined amount of air driven at a set velocity, pushing smoke away from a projected a protected objective. So usually we see that down a corridor, or maybe we have two atria linked by a uh, long connecting corridor. Sometimes you can drop a fire curtain on that, but a lot of times an airflow movement's calculated, or to stop smoke from moving uh, down corridors, you'd rush air down that corridors, and that would push the smoke back. So you are diluting the smoke, but you're mo actually keeping it from moving down that uh, protected pathway. Um, and it also, also in a space that large, it's not necessarily pumping up the fire. And even if you are, you are hopefully pushing the fire and the effects of combustion away from the direction of airflow, or with the direction of airflow, excuse me. Um, it's very useful in creating compartmentation without the use of physical barriers. Um, obviously, pressurization relies on that physical barrier to stop that airflow and to create that pressure differential. If you don't have that pressure, if you don't have that barrier, you're going to create airflow. Um, it's only applicable really in a space that you can constrain that air. So tunnels, other long corridors. Um, so you need to have boundaries to increase that velocity of air to move it down the tunnel. Um, and then finally buoyancy. Um, fire is built on buoyancy. Um, it's built on that principle of your heat and therefore your smoke is rising. So the buoy principle of buoyancy is not necessarily controlling smoke movement, but using its natural smoke rise to 
isolate that smoke or to vent it or to get it out of the space. You know it's going to go up for a certain period and you're going to create your systems or create your um, control method to keep that constantly, keep that smoke constantly moving out.